In this video, I'd like to take a few minutes to cover how you can go about finding your loops and files within the browser of Studio One. And depending on what version of Studio One you're using, the amount of loop content that's included is going to be more or less. Professional is gonna give you the most content. And if you're someone who has a large amount of your own personal audio samples and files, I've heard of people having two, 300 gigs of samples and audio files. Uh, knowing how to do a search for those and to organize those with tabs can help save you time. So let's just go ahead and get started by taking a look at the loops tab. I'll click on that. And the important thing to note here is that there's a three tier system up at the top that's gonna help you sort your loops. So this first tier is going to show you the folders in immediate view here. So the options for all of these drop down menus are gonna be the same. But uh, whatever we choose here is going to be what we see first. So right now this is sorted by vendor and these are the folders for the different vendors of loops that I have. If I wanted to say find a snare, then I could go to the instrument type and then we can see that that's gonna sort by the type of instrument and then I could come to the drums to find that. We could choose by character so we could see at the bottom here, we also have snare. And so whatever we've chosen in this first tier is going to be first displayed. Now, once we open up one of these folders, the, what is displayed is gonna uh, be based on this second dropdown menu, so the style. So if I were to open up the snare menu, then we should see the snares grouped by particular styles. So I'll click on that to open it up and we can see dubstep, EDM, electronic, and so on. I'm actually surprised that there's not one here for rock or R&B because I know some uh, loop, loops have been tagged with those uh, names, but you can see how this works here that we have the style selected in the second tier. So if we wanted to choose type for the second tier, then we can see audio files, documents, music files, and video files. If we have a lot of loops installed from different vendors, then we may want to see by vendor. If we have one that is our favorite, they have a lot of good loops, then we can choose to sort there. Say you like the snares from Sample Magic, so then just choose vendor for the second level. So now our third tier is showing instrument. And that's not particularly useful for when we open up one of these folders because we've already we're already working with the snare for the character. So this relates to drums, so this is not really helpful, but let's go ahead anyway and expand out the sample magic and we can see drums, and that makes sense. If we'd like, we can choose the type, and we can see how that updates. We could also choose the style. So let's open up the folder here, and now we have our individual loops, and these are all snares here. To audition, we can just double click, and then click once to select another one, or use your up and down arrows. To quickly return to the top, just use the left arrow and that's gonna take you to the top folder. To close that, you can left arrow again. So you can use your up and down arrows to navigate these different folders. Use the right arrow to open up that folder and uh, down arrow. And down at the bottom, I can click stop. This is set up to loop our audition. If I take that off, double click. Now, as I arrow down, it's not going to loop. So a quick way to begin the auditioning process is to double click. You can also click on the play button there. And then when we have this icon activated, if we are playing back our song, for instance, and we maybe want to choose a different snare for the song or a different loop or whatever, uh, you can you activate this. Just be sure that that's highlighted. And the loop is going to play back at the tempo that you have set in your song. So that's gonna give you a better idea of how it's gonna sound if you're playing your song back here in the arrange view, then as long as you have this activated, then your loop is gonna play back at this tempo here. Now, also when we have a file selected, we can see information on the sample rate, the bit depth, the type of file that it is, its length. And if there's BPM data encoded into that file, then we will see that in the bottom right-hand corner here. And at the very top of the browser in the loops tab, we have this breadcrumb view that is going to display kind of 
the hierarchy of where we are. We're in loops, snare, simple magic, and hip hop. So if I were to come here and choose the personas, then that's gonna update down below. If I click on this here, I can choose EDM and we're taken there. I can then right arrow to expand that out and navigate between these different loops here. And as you can see with this, since, since this is a loop, we can see the BPM data down here. Now I'm going to left arrow to collapse that, left arrow for that, and let's just kind of clean some of this up. Now we can also make use of a search function that's available in the browser, and we can access that by clicking on the magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner. So if I click on that, we have this panel that pops up and a field where we can go ahead and enter what we're looking for. So if I put in snare, press enter, then the results will be displayed down below. We can see that we have over a thousand results in audio files. So again, we can double click to begin auditioning, use the down arrow to navigate between these. I'll press stop. And we, when we use the search function, it's gonna be based on tags that have been applied to the individual files. So you can see with this file selected, we can see the particular tags that have been assigned to it. If I select this one, then these all have the same tags there. So we can also use the tags down below. So if I specifically wanted rock, then I can click on that. And then you can see that rock is included as a tag for this file here. Everything that we select should have rock included as a tag. If we'd like to clear these search items out, then we can click on the X here. If we would like to hide this panel that shows the tags, then we would click there. So again, if I wanted to find 808s, I could press enter on that. Then all of the results are listed here. If I select one, then we can see information on that. And actually there's no 808 tag for these, but 808 is in the name. So that's another way that these results are gonna show up by, uh, if whatever you put your search in, it's listed in the name of the file, then that's gonna be included in your results as well. So next we'll take a look at the files tab, but before we do that, just notice that when I uh, double click to audition, we have a volume control here as well. And we have the option to send the audio of the auditioning out to a separate output other than the main. By default, it's gonna be on your main stereo out uh, of your system. But if we were to come to the song and song setup, then I'll come to the audio input output setup. And on the outputs tab here, we can see audition by default, this will be on main. But if you have an audio interface that has multiple outs and you have a different set of speakers that you'd like to send the audio to from auditioning in the browser, you can click on the drop down menu and select that there. But I'm going to cancel out of here. Let's close out that tag search and close out the search window. And let's move on to the files tab. Now on the files tab, by default, you should see files and Studio One. So files is gonna allow you to navigate your system. And here you can navigate to the place where you have your uh, audio samples and set that up as a tab as I've done here. And we'll take a look at how to do that in just a second. We then have the Studio One and this is gonna show the folders that are contained in your Studio One folder. So all of your songs, your shows, projects, and presets. So for me, I've got a couple presets set up. So I have battery and I created a preset for that and we can access our presets here. If I right click on that, we can rename it, delete it or show it in our Explorer window. So we can see the file path here, my Quana, Studio One presets and so on. Let's collapse that. Now here I've set this tab up to directly navigate to where I have all of my sounds and samples. So if you use the files tab to go to wherever your audio samples are, what you can do is once you're there, say we wanted to add this vocal samples folder as a tab up above for quick access. We could right click on that folder, choose new tab from here, and we can see now we can quickly access the vocal samples folder 
Sounds and Samples, the Studio One. So you can see how this works. If you have a tab that you'd like to remove, just right click on it and choose Close Tab. And within the Files tab, we also have the same search function. So if I click on the magnifying glass here, then we can perform a search. Just be aware that whatever folder you have selected or highlighted is going to be where the search is performed. So if, if I'd like to find an 808, I'd want to click once to highlight the drum samples folder. Let's click in the search field. I'll type in 808 and press enter. And now we can see I've got over a thousand results here for 808s. And so if you're someone who has a ton of samples, this could be one method that you can use to help you find the file that you're looking for. We can clear out that search by clicking on the X here and close out the search window by clicking on the magnifying glass. Now, if I expand out one of these folders, I'm going to down arrow, right arrow to expand that out. Uh, when we right click on our audio files, as well as our loops, we have a few different options that might be useful to you. So with this, you can quickly send this to a sample one. So if we choose that, then that audio sample is automatically loaded into a sample one and mapped across the keyboard here. All right, let's uh, remove this out. I'll shift T to remove that track. Right clicking again, we also have the option to send that to an impact, but just keep in mind if you're gonna use this option, Studio One is going to slice up your audio file based on where it detects transients. So if we send that to the impact, we can see how that single audio file has been split based on where Studio One finds transients. So if you don't want that to happen, then your best bet would be to send it to a sample one or drag your audio files in uh, directly to one of the pads. Now I receive a lot of comments from people who ask how they can go about creating their own preset kits within impact from the loops and audio files that are included in the, the studio one presets. So if we come up to the top of the impact and choose a kit here. So when we're working with these preset kits, we may not like all of the sounds that are included and we want to combine a few of these with other sounds from other kits. So, one way that you could do this is if we come to the loops tab and click on the magnifying glass to open up the search field, your audio sample that's loaded into the pad, the name of it is going to be listed here. Don't use the names that are on the pads. So if I click on this perk tone to select that, we can see the actual name of the audio file is listed here. Coming to this one, we can see that there, our snare name is there. So then we can type this name into the search field kit 0303 snare one. And then we can see if I double click, that's that audio file. So if I come to the instruments tab and bring in a new sample one, let's come back to the loops tab. I could then drag that into here to begin creating my own unique preset. And then once you have added all of the sounds that you want, you can come up to this little paper icon and choose to store that as a preset. Now there is a quicker way to get this done. So if we click the pin icon up at the top to keep this open and let's come back to the other impact. Now say we also wanted the symbol and the crash in this personal preset that we're creating. It's easier instead of searching in the browser, we could just hold control over the sound, the sample that we'd like. Be sure to select that pad first, be sure it's highlighted. I'll hold control. Notice that the arrow changes to a hand. I can click hold and drag that over to the second impact and load these in like so. So I'll click once to highlight that, hold control, drag it over. And now we can quickly go about creating a kit. And then if we have another kit that we'd like to pull sounds from, just open that up. Uh, let's highlight a pad, hold control click and drag that over. And then again, coming up to the paper icon, store that as a preset, and then you'll be all set.
Okay, so we'll start to wrap up here. And the last thing that I'll mention is if you feel like you are missing content or to check and be sure that you are not missing any of the loop content that's included in your version of Studio One, what you can do is come up to Studio One up at the top, then choose Studio One installation. And then here at the very bottom, uh, we have, or in the center, we have loop libraries. So click on the arrow to expand that out. And you can see the status of what's been installed or not on your system. So for me, we can see that the Vengeance Sound and Electronic Audio Loops, these haven't been installed. So if you have any that aren't showing as installed and you'd like to include that content, just be sure that you come over to the box here to the left, put the checks there. Studio One's gonna give you information on the space that's required and how much you have available. Then you can click on the Install button and that's gonna take care of that for you. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful for you if you're someone who's been struggling with locating your loops and files within the browser. If you've got a large amount of content, then sometimes it could be a bit rough to manage, but I hope some of these tools that I've showed will help you out. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.